All right, this video is for people who just want to figure out how to do GitHub quickly and easily. So I'll save all the intro banter and personal anecdotes for the description and we'll get right into what is the GitHub and then how to do. So Git is a form of version control, which is a very useful thing if you have many people working on the same code project. For example, if someone is an idiot and fucks up your project, you can roll back to a previous working version so you don't have to lose time fixing their mistakes. Also, let's say two people are working on the same file. One person commits their version and then I commit mine. Git can automatically merge our changes so we don't have to go line by line and figure out how our separate versions are different. This is all you need to worry about for now if you've never used version control before. That you can save and retrieve different versions of your project and that you can easily collaborate with others. To get started, you have two options. You can use the GUI or you can do everything from the console like a hashtag true developer. Okay, to be honest, I'm a GUI using pleb and I think it has a pretty nice interface. So go ahead and download the application. The link's in the description. This is all you have to do to make a project. You click the plus sign, you do go to create, and then you have your name. I'll probably end up deleting this, but we'll create a repository called test. And then we have all of this stuff here that Git initializes. So we want to publish this commit before we make any changes. So we'll just describe our project. I'll just say video demo and publish. If you want to add files to it, all you have to do is go to this gear and then say open in Explorer and you can see all of the files you can add to it, you can delete things, and then those changes will be reflected here. Okay, so this is what my interface looks like. You can see I have all my projects over here and I've pulled up one of them. It was a crappy little C++ thing I did over a year ago, but we have the history tab selected so we can see all of our changes and all of our commits. Now I keep using that word. A commit is basically just when you submit your changes to GitHub and you should make a commit anytime you do anything significant that works. So for example, in this commit, I made a victory screen and a restart. So this game was just a simple like Mario style platformer. So in this commit, I had a victory screen show up when the player beat the level, and then there was an option to restart the level. So this was a really simple feature, but I decided to make a commit in case uh, later features I made messed it up and I wanted to roll back to this point. Now you can see I've clicked on this specific commit it has the list of all of the different files that were changed. And so you can see here in game.h, the header file, uh, the green is stuff that was added and then the red was deleted. So you can see uh, and show splash screen. The splash screen was like the victory screen. I added a parameter to the function, whereas before it just showed one splash screen. Now I think I wanted it to show different types. So I had victory screens and menu screens so I added a parameter for that. So that's why this is useful because you can go back and look at your work and see what you did and what your thought process was. So let's take a look at the other tab, changes. This is where all of the changes compared to the latest working version of your code are. So this is everything that has not yet been committed. So I made a text file for the sake of this demo, happy video change.txt. I just wrote a little something in there. Now, if you remember before how I had all those little messages like showed victory screen, uh, made it so it didn't crash. You want to have descriptive commit titles so that you remember what you did in case you even need to go back several versions because you really royally fucked up. So in this case, I'll just say, um, added file for demo. But if you want to be a real pro and use the console, just click on this gear and then say open and git shell. Okay, so what we want to do here is first we need to add all of our files to tell git we want you to track these. So we're going to do git add and you can either type the file name or you can do a period to add everything. So now you see it says, okay, we're going to add something. It's green. We're good to go. So now we do git commit and then hyphen M and you want to make sure you write a commit message. So I'll just say happy test demo uh, and then press enter. And there we go. One file changed, one insertion, and we have a new revision number. 
The next thing I want to talk about is cloning versus forking. So here we have the d3.js repository, a very big, very popular one, and you see all of these different forks and stars and watches. So the watching is just like you're subscribing to updates on this, the star is just favoriting it, but then forking means that you're getting a copy of this repository to your account, and that means that you can work on it to your heart's content. Now if you want to contribute to this if there's an open source project you're interested in you can send a pull request and this is what we did for our community game project when we were all working on it now that doesn't necessarily mean it'll get accepted but that's one way you can start working on open source projects if you choose to clone it however or just directly download it like there's a download link over here or you can clone to your desktop over here uh, that means that you're just creating a copy of it and there isn't really a direct way to send that pull request or contribute. It's just for your own records, I suppose. Lastly, I think everyone should know about GitHub Pages. This is a personal project of mine that I've hosted on GitHub, and you can see it doesn't just do basic pages. This is a data visualization of my Goodreads account, so this is where in the world every author is from of every book I've read for the past four or five years. You can see I really like European literature for whatever reason, uh, but all you have to do to get this hosted on a web page is make a repository with your username github.io and then as long as you have an index.html file, it'll just host whatever's on there. GitHub is a great place to start building a portfolio, host a personal page, contribute to open source projects, but if you're looking for stuff to get started on, if you want a project right now and you don't know what to work on, even if you've never really done code before, or if you're a master coder, we are doing these weekly or bi-monthly challenges. I've been doing code streams every Saturday at 12 p.m. Central Time. You should be there. I've been doing code streams and they've been very fun and I thought, what if every two, three, four weeks we did some big challenge together? So for example, this week's theme is a text adventure. The only rules are that you have to make a game that is beatable, it has a clear start and finish, even if it only takes like 30 seconds or a minute to beat, it has to be in the spirit of the theme, which is a text adventure, but otherwise anything goes, you should be as creative and crazy as possible, and if we get a lot of submissions, I'll feature the coolest ones on the stream, otherwise we'll take a look at everyone's, and so basically you just make this project, upload the code to GitHub, then post that link on the subreddit, and more information is also in the subreddit, and the link to that is in the description. So I hope if you guys are starting out coding, you will take part in these fun challenges. I think that if pianists have to practice piano every day and artists can do sketches, then we should also do little mini games to get our creative juices flowing without it having to be a competition or a game jam. Just fun stuff to get you in the habit of getting started when you're faced with a blank screen. Alright guys, have a happy day wherever you are, and I'll see you next time. Bye!